Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Elder Scrolls Online video with me, Sherman. You guys might notice something a little different about my screen. I do have combat metrics loaded because I have been out testing new build ideas. Um, I haven't been parsing too much on a skeleton, to be honest, because I, I'm going to be straightforward with you guys. If you think parsing on a skeleton is accurate, you might want to rethink that because there's a lot of variables that target skeletons don't account for. They don't account for the variable of damage being done towards you. They don't count for the variables of you mitigating damage, you having to block, dodge, you know, heal, all that kind of stuff, the different kinds of damage that your character takes. It's a good way to get a general idea of your DPS, but it doesn't give you a definitive idea of DPS. So I've been testing on the skeleton, going out to world bosses, testing on world bosses to kind of get more of a general idea, just practicing more or less the rotation on the skeleton, then going out and testing it and seeing how well I can get my rotation down, that kind of thing. Um, and it's nothing against people who like to parse on skeletons, trust me. I, I think it's a good thing that people parse on skeletons. I just don't take their numbers as accurate. And the reason, why, main reason why is because there's too many variables. I mean, you take every dungeon has different encounters. Not every dungeon has the same encounters. So you can't, you have to take the variables of those encounters against what you do in DPS. And you, sometimes you can get decent numbers sometimes you don't get decent numbers like when i when i go out and parse on 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 npcs sometimes i even get greater dps uh numbers than i do on the skeleton for a short time and then i and then i have to break from that to dodge roll to avoid damage to do different things to stay on the move um and then go right back into combat trying to keep my dps at a high rating but it's not the easiest thing to do when you have to do those other things those other variables like i said that aren't accounted for with the target skeleton so yeah i think that like i said i think they're good i think it's a good it's a good tool to to use for testing practicing that kind of thing but other than that it's it's not a a it's not a good definitive way to test your DPS. Like, because you can't test every proc set against it, especially if it's a, something that where you got to take damage. You don't know if you're gonna, it's going to proc. You have to, you know, because you know it's not going to proc, you know it's not going to give you an accurate, you know, um, idea of your total DPS. Because some things need you to take damage in order to proc damage against it. Or you have to do something like take some kind of damage to mitigate some kind of damage or you have to heal somebody and these things you know you can't even like do heal testing on it because it doesn't give you a definitive way of testing the heals so i've been testing a lot of different builds today and just different build ideas different build structures a lot with the new sets and i i want to talk about the new sets. so um i am right now running in that blood drinker set now a lot of people say it's not a very good set because you know it just does 20 percent bleed damage but how many abilities do you have that bleed well in most cases one or two uh that bleed but even just one or two it's the five it's just a five piece bonus that gives you that little bit of extra damage on the bleed side and then i'm running right now i'm running uh sword dancers because of the extra weapon damage on the dual wield side because I use some dual wield abilities, mainly two, <laughs> um, for this build, and so I was testing that out. I've tried a few other sets in here. Um, I, I've tried them, but I haven't used a lot of them. Like I, this isn't my only character that I've been testing on. So, like I tested two throw. Uh, I was going to run two throw on this with the other uh, DPS set. So I still have to, t I still want to test that with the Nightblade. I was doing uh, some testing with the DK and um, like I said, I haven't, I haven't changed the glyphs on these yet because I haven't tested this monster set yet. Um, I think this is going to be a really good monster set for people who want to get extra critical. This is going to be a freaking awesome set, especially for people not playing Nightblades. Like you can go with another pro like Vipers, Slime Claw, uh, Slime Craws set. And then run, you know, another, you know, type of set, whatever, you know, kind of thing. And you can get a lot of DPS out of it. I am running the Lady or the Lover Mundus. So if you guys are wondering how I got so much high crit, I'm a Khajiit. <laughs> 
I'm a, I'm a Khajiit, and I'm running two things that pretty much have procs with them. So, um, both Sword Dancers and the set uh, that I'm running, the Blood Drinker, do you have procs or crits? Uh, this one I run just basically for the proc damage. It's good. But here's the thing, like this one's good, but it's not good good. Like it's it's okay. A lot of the sets, the, the these sets have taken a lot, you know, kind of a hit. And to be honest, I'm glad that they put it, they put these kind of things on these monster sets because you definitely need a way to alleviate damage, especially in PvP, because a lot of people run proc sets in PvP and Cyrodiil and in Battlegrounds. So this is, you know, what they've done with a lot of the changes to proc sets there um, for that manner is, is good, but they still have a little bit of work to do with certain other proc sets to give them a little bit more um, activeness kind of thing. Like, like not activeness, but a little bit of a delay kind of thing, you know, so people can prepare for when they're going to hit by it. So yeah, but lots of testing going on today for me. I've been basically, because I don't have my characters right now, so the only things I have available are templates, so I've just been putting together some template builds, going out and testing different um, setups, different things like that. Just, just kind of, just like I said, testing the new sets. I've tested the new tank set. I think that the that particular set, I'm going to get down to it real quick. Uh, let me go ahead and junk that because I don't need it. Um, where is the monster sets for this horns of reach sets? So I tested the new Iron Blood set, and it's a really good set. That 75% uh, reduced movement speed is a killer. But if you have the resistances, you have the mitigation, you, you won't even like. You don't even need to move in most fights um, because you get this thing proccing every 15 seconds. It will go off almost, and when it does, that's 30% damage reduction. Now this one here is another good one even though it has a really high cooldown but it th these two together work really well together to a certain degree uh, i think this set here works better with um if you're playing like more of a uh region tank like a health recovery tank kind of thing if you're playing one of those this set would be really good for that because of that uh damage reduction but it's the time limit on it the, the fact that it only occurs every 45 seconds and it only lasts for five seconds now if it lasted for say 10 seconds with a 45 second cooldown i would say that it would be a lot better choice but it since it's only five seconds with a 45 second cooldown they need to drop that 45 seconds to like 25 seconds and i think this set would be really kind of a decent set it wouldn't be a great set but it'd be one that somebody could use to get you know uh till they can get a better set or something like that or you know it could be something that they could stick with for a while depending on the other five piece set they're running as a tank. Pillars of Nerd is another really good set. I did uh, combo it with my, my DK <coughs> with my DK build. I was running this one, uh, the other uh, the, the bleed one that I'm running now, and then I was running on top of it, I was running the uh, what is that one? Hold on. <laughs> now I gotta go look at the monster sets because I don't remember the monster set. I was running with it. I think I have it out. Um, no, I don't. Let's see here. So I was running Selene's with it. Tried that. That works really good still. Um, Stormfist is another good one. And oh, I was running the new monster. I tried the new this new mo monster set with the DK, and this one's really good. And especially on a Stam DK, this one's really power can be really powerful. But even on not on a Stam DK, even on a Magicka DK, this is a really powerful set because it does flame damage. Now that physical damage every one second um, is pretty good. But as long as you're standing within the ring, you get 200 weapon damage along with it. So this one does scale off of Magicka stamina. Whatever the one is your highest attribute, it scales with that. So if you're running more Magicka, you get the fire damage with with magic or extra spell damage. If you're running um, physical damage or st stam damage, stamina build, uh, you get the physical damage and then you get the, the weapon damage. So it's a really kind of a, a cool combo. But with this one, it's better to go with crit sets, like a crit, really good crit build, and maybe not so much pin. Now this build I'm running here, like I said, I'm running the Lover Mundus. Um, as you can see, I have 3,728. And then if you go into my champion points, I have another 2,000 
um, 388. So the combination of the do to give me uh, gives me over 5,000, almost 6,000 pin, which is really good. I mean, it just puts me in that sweet spot, especially if I'm with a tank. It puts me in that sweet spot for DPS. So um, I have tried a couple combinations in skills. Right now, this is the one I find works the best. I know a lot of people don't like Ambush, but this is a really powerful ability because it empowers your next attack by 20%. So when you do this and you go right into Twin Slashes, you get that extra damage and you get that bleed, that really powerful bleed because it's increased by not only 20% from your champion points, but another 20% from your armor. So it's 40% in total. So you're getting 40% more damage on that bleed, and it's a super powerful bleed. Um, unfortunately, I don't have another bleed with this, so that's kind of what I'm stuck with right now. But it works out really, really well. It's a really uh, good way to kind of combo the two together. This is just kind of a generic build, because with templates, we don't get a lot of options unless we're running, like, you know... Um, trial sets and even the trial sets no offense to anyone out there i think trial sets are good but i think that the 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 options we have for templates we need a lot more in order to to really test every build combination that is in the the game pretty much because you can't just say that everyone's going to run you know the meta trial build um because you have to start somewhere you have to start off with basic stuff to move into trials and you have to have a build that's going to be viable for that and if those those builds aren't viable, then there's no reason to even have the gear sets in the game. So why even have them? And that brings me back to something else I want to talk about. <coughs> so the other thing I want to talk about is, if you guys don't know, when One Tamriel came out, they changed the world system. We used to have a level scaled system to where each zone was set to specific levels. They did away with that and did did the world based on a scaled system. And a lot of people misinterpreted how that scaled system worked. Well, everyone thinks the game scales to you. It doesn't. The game scales you to that value, to a certain numerical value. And it's really easy to understand. Like, if you have anything above 32,000 in your primary attribute, you are on par with what you need for DPS. Now, this Khajiit doesn't have 32,000 and still does fine for DPS in both Trials and Dungeons. Um... I can, most of the time, I can do anywhere between 26 to 32k with this particular build. Um, if I keep my rotation up and, and I get a, a good, solid, you know, rotation going down and I can keep it down. Um, otherwise, I'm looking at about 20 to 26, 20 to 26k, depending. Um, sometimes 20 to 24k on my DPS with this. Now, I have... Uh, tried other setups and gotten more out of it, but you got to think the, I'm looking at not just builds for the end game player. I'm looking at the average player. I'm looking at um, new players coming into the game and people who don't don't have the, the ability to get into trial groups right away. And the, the you know like offering a lot. Like I said, always I'm always about offering more variety than just the meta. So. <coughs> But with one Tamriel, it put the game on a certain scale factor, and that scale factor is really easy to reach, no matter what level you are, no matter what um, CP level you are. As long as you ha your character is within certain range of certain attributes, you'll be fine in open world questing, you'll be fine in normal dungeons, until you reach a certain, um, even then, you know, you can still run trial or normal dungeons and vet dungeons without having any CP whatsoever. Uh, this same thing goes with, with you know, running v normal trials. You can run normal trials without being CP 300 or CP 400. You just have to have a build that's going to be viable for it. And that brings me back to... One Tamriel, what One Tamriel did, is they scaled the whole entire game, not just certain aspects of the game, they scaled everything in the game to fit within a certain numerical value on the character. This goes for attributes, this goes for resistances, this goes for damage, this goes for crit chance, this is everything. Like, all this stuff is set to a certain value, and if you try to exceed that value, it can be really hard. Like, if I was running the, the, um... Thief Mundestone, I can't reach, like, you cannot reach 100% crit 
because the game's not designed to allow you to. You can get close. You can get about, I think it's like 94, 96% crit chance. But even then, it's not 100%, so you still have that room for failure on that. Um, and, and that's what it comes down to. It comes down to, we will never have perfect builds. <laughs> no matter what anyone thinks, you will never have a perfect build. Like, there is no perfect tank build. There is no perfect... DPS build. There is no perfect healer build. There's just good. There, I mean, there's different levels. Don't get me wrong. There's like great builds. There's there's moderate builds. There's good builds. There's bad builds. There's crap builds. But in all honesty, because of the way the game scales, it's really easy. I mean, everything has can go to gold quality. So once every once you max something to gold quality, it can't go any higher. It can't give you any more out of it. You can't push the limits of it. Same thing with glyphs. They can't go any higher than gold quality. Your your skills don't go higher than rank two, you know, rank four. Your uh, champion points can only go to go to a hundred points in them. So eventually, what's going to happen is we our characters are going to be able to, to max everything out in champion points. Like literally, everything will be able to be go to CP one hundred, um, or uh, you know, have a hundred CP into them. Because eventually, I mean, it'll be a long time down the road before we get there. But we will be able to put 100 points into every champion point thing in, in the trees. And I'm sure pro by that time, when we get to that point in the game, we're talking probably good 5 or 10 years down the road from now before we even see that. Because we're only getting, what, 30 champion points per? And I think we would need something like 12... Well, we probably need close to 10,000. Let me see. I'm just going to go do the math real quick, so... One, two, three, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty-four, or sixteen, twenty, twenty-four, <coughs> twenty-eight, thirty-two, thirty-six, forty. Okay, so thirty-six, thirty-six hundred. Uh, we would need thirty-six hundred points. In order to max every one of these out. 3,600 points. So 3,600 points to max every champion point tree out. So if we have 3,600 points, once we get there, which, like I said, 30 points a, a DLC or an expansion, we will not get there anytime soon. <laughs> like, we're still a long ways off. And even once we get to that point, by that time, they'll have a new game out. Like, there'll be something better that's come along, and it'll put this game to shame. No offense um, to the developers, but there will be somebody that'll come along and make this game look like Atari. So, and people will move on to that, or other games. So, but with the scaling, like I said, everything is really balanced out right now. It, it's really simple for a new player to join the game and be on par, you know, be not on par, but be in within range of their friend who's CP 630. They're not like super far off. They're 20% behind in attributes, possibly 26 if the person has undaunted metal. If the person doesn't have undaunted metal, then they are literally just 20% behind in attributes. And even that is in a huge like gap when it comes to player skill versus player build. A play, player's skill can outshine a player build a lot of the time. I mean, I've seen people with, with super amazing, you know, builds, but they can't play them. And I've seen people with really bad builds play them, like, phenomenally well. So there's that, you know, it's, it's just kind of a, like, it's all in the interpretation of how you see the game. A lot of people see the game only for the in-game high-end high, high -end builds. A lot of people see the game for what it truly is, and that's a game with a diverse build system that allows for a variety of different builds, a variety of different play styles, and just a huge amount of freedom for the player to decide how they want to play the game and how they want to put together their character. If the person feels like playing like a DPS healer, they can do that. Um, if the person feels like playing a stam DPS healer, they can do that too. Hey, there's there's not a lot of like ways that you can't play the game. Now, is it going to be viable? It's all up to interpretation. Like I said, you know, I mean, some people, like the person who plays that kind of build, sees it as being viable. This in-game player over here, this meta player, sees it as a non-viable build and is like, I don't want you playing with me. Well, guess what? We have enough guilds in the game. <laughs> 
you you can fit in anywhere so but in 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 the reality of it is we will always have a meta we will always have you know the casual player we will always have the average player the you know the non meta players we will always have a ma mass majority of different types of players so focusing as a as a person a content a de you know developer for the game somebody who designs content and and designs you know like information old videos for people on you know different build types uh different play styles things like that i don't plan on focusing on any particular subset like i don't focus on just the meta i don't focus on just in game i focus on all aspects of the game because it's more important to me to reach more people and give people a lot more people variety in, in play styles if i want to make a meta build that's not complicated i just i could do it right now it's you don't need to be a rocket scientist to figure out you know what what you need to do to make a meta build i mean the skills are already set, laid out for us by everyone else so just take those particular skills put it on your toolbar if something differentiates you from a different class adjust it through your class abilities like most people don't run ambush most people just run uh blood craze they run this they run this a lot of times they run more dual wield abilities um on the night blade than they do the class abilities now they most people do run veiled strike because of the uh extra physical pin on it that you can get when it's stand based some people run the siphoning abilities you know there's you have like all these different things i find that this setup works really good siphoning strikes is a great ability but this works fine without it um everyone runs anyone who's plays um you know dps runs cow traps most people also run um from the fighters guild they run trap beast actually they run this one <coughs> i'll just go ahead and unlock it uh, but they run rearming trap because then it, it re-triggers and it reapplies so you don't have to sit there and recast it like you know Continuously you can just apply it and then run your rotation then reapply it And you're not worried about it. Just you know triggering the one time the only thing I don't like about trap east is the fact that it has such a short window I know a lot of people are like it's got a really long window you set the trap uh, the blade trap at your location which takes 1.5 seconds and it lasts for one minute once it goes off it only lasts for six, six seconds and then it has to th then it will re-trigger uh the trap and resets to be triggered one more time so it's actually 12 seconds well if you count the 1.5 seconds it takes to arm so you're looking at um you know what is that uh, 12 15 seconds on you know in total for it to cast and then recast it again so it's like You've got 15 seconds on this along with that other stuff. So I, that's the only reason why I don't like it is it's 15. It's like it doesn't give you a, a big window to keep that that 20 percent damage, you know, or 10 percent critical damage. It, it just it's not enough, in my opinion. And being a Nightblade, you get a, a little bit of extra, you know, critical damage out of it. And you have your champion points, which you can get extra crit damage. I only have mine set to 10% because if I don't, I lose this. And if I put this into here, I won't have enough to get me um, the 20% extra in here. So it's e just easier to go 20% here, 10% here, this here, that there. Um, I can switch around. I can go 20% here, 10% here. But I still like that extra bleed damage and the poison damage and everything, so. But yeah, the whole point of this is that, one, first off, don't trust everything you see on a skeleton parse because it's not 100% accurate. It's, there's too many variables to count for that we can't count for. Or that we can't account for. You know, there's just way too many. Um, you can use it as a way to test your rotation, get a general idea of your rotation, and a general basic idea of your DPS. Because it's, there's no 100% guarantee way of saying, hey, you're going to do 43,000 anytime you're, you know, throughout the whole fight. Because there's too many variables that stop you from doing the DPS. So, or you might die, and that, that right there then takes away two people's DPS. Uh, possibly it takes away healings, possibly it takes away the tank taunting, you know, doing that kind of thing. There's too many variables that come into play and it creates a lot more uh, diff different results than what you get on a target skeleton, which is completely 100% controlled. That's the first thing. Second thing, don't be afraid to diversify your build. Don't be afraid to play something outside the norm. 
If you don't, you know, if you see, if you have a character that's meta play, play that character only in meta. Don't worry about all the other characters because you only need one character at in-game uh, level because really you don't need an in-game healer, you don't need an in-game tank unless that's what you play, and you don't need like five in-game DPS. You just need one. Why? Because what's the point in having five others? So you can experience the same content over and over again with a different build? I'd much rather just enjoy the game. That's just my opinion. So, I say, you know, look at the, you know, look at the build diversity the game offers. Find something that you enjoy and play it. Next up, <clears throat> when it comes to gear sets, don't, don't, don't doubt any gear set as being a bad choice. Because it doesn't offer you the best results. Look at what it can offer you and just go with what it can offer you for now until you can get something better. If all you can get is a really cheese set for cheap in the, in the, in the, in the auction house, get it. As long as it fits with the, towards your, your build structure, get it and use it for now until you can get something better. Like I actually told, uh, was talking to somebody the other day about an Overland set because they weren't sure it would be something that would be viable. And that was Vampire's Cloak. Now, if you guys don't know what Vampire's Cloak is, I will go ahead and pull it out just so you can see. Uh, but they were wanting to make a tank build, and I told them uh, this was the first thing that came out of my mouth. I said, Vampire's Cloak, and they were like, why? And I said, look at what it does. I said, it grants you minor protection at all times, reducing the damage you take by 8%. So I said, anyone that, you know, any, I said, you're playing a Sork, you want something tanky, this is going to be your best tanky option, unless you're using the Fighter's Guild Circle of Protection, which is going to give you that 8% minor protection. But you're not using that, so don't worry, this will give you that. And it gives you a little bit of spell damage on top of it. And he goes, what do I need the spell damage for? I said, well, it depends. If you're playing a magic tank, that little bit of spell damage can help you out. If you're not playing a magic tank, but you're playing a stam tank, and you need some extra heal, like healing effect, that's, where that, that's what that spell damage will do, is give you a little bit of extra healing effect. I said, so you have a little bit of options in there with the build, you know, with the design of your build. And I said, and it's one of many options. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, you do have, like I said, it's always about variety, it's always about choice, it's always about what you're trying to do with your build, and if you're trying to make a Minimax build, like a, a true in-game Minimax build, you have to have something in order to get that something else, so running with what you can is more effective than running with nothing, with, with just a, a, you know, a basic crafted set, not even a gear set, just a basic crafted, you know, um, five medium, one heavy, one light, with no no set bonuses. It's it's a lot easier to go with a something that gives you a set bonus, so that way you have something there giving you a little bit more. And yeah, that's that's pretty much pretty much it. I mean, I I'm I'm just gonna tinker here pretty much for the next two weeks and you know, come up with some, some general ideas of some build structure ideas, you know, because now that I'm doing it, I, I want to get into, like, coming up with some ideas, and this is a good way to, for me to, to kind of come up with some new ideas, especially with the new gear sets, especially with the new monster sets. Some of them, I actually, you know, I actually like a lot of the stuff, um, even though some of it, people are like, oh, it sucks. Um, but that's their opinion, and my opinion is different from everyone else's, because I'm not them, so... <laughs> But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I know it wasn't, you know, like what everybody wanted, or maybe it was. I don't know. Uh, but if you guys did enjoy this video, go ahead and hit that like button. It would be greatly appreciated. If you guys want to see more videos by me, you can hit that subscribe button. I do try to post videos on a weekly basis. Um, right now, I'm trying to keep, like, two videos a week. But it just depends on my time schedule and how much time I invest in a video like this one. Uh, it's actually three days in the making. I know it seems weird, but it, it is. I've been trying to make it for three days now. And uh, I know that talking about parsing on a skeleton can be kind of controversial. So that's kind of why it took so long. But yeah, uh, I, that's it. So other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day, and I will see you all later. Bye.